we have tasted of your glory, and we won't more. We won't more. We won't more. of that story I want to talk to you about the reality of choices in our lives the reality of our choices and our theme this year is taking the word to the world I believe that's vitally important but church I also believe that the world starts right here and this morning particularly my heart is bent towards the fact that our world as we spread the gospel and as we try to reach people should begin not only here but it should begin with our children Amen. our young people I'll be honest with you this morning I've never tried to hold anything back when I preach the word of God but I do hope you know this every time that I try to submit myself to the under the authority of the Holy Spirit to preach the word of God I do it out of the most deepest love for you people and here's one thing I know. I believe that the siege of attack upon our children, particularly our teenagers and those that are going through that season in our lives. How many in the house of the Lord can identify with that season? Amen. 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 That we are not about to 
take a back seat and allow any harm to come to anyone we love. Amen? Amen. Amen. So this story this morning of the son who asked the father for his part of the inheritance to go and do his own thing basically comes down to a choice. And this young man made two choices within this story. We're going to deal with both of them, but the first choice is the one we're going to talk about a lot this morning. If you'll stand for Luke chapter 15, we're going to begin in verse number 11. And it says this, And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there he wasted his substance on riotous or foolish living. And when he had spent it all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and he joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed the swine. And he said, Fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave to him. Now look at verse 17. It says, And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? This morning, I want to talk to you about the reality of our choices. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in the wonderful work in this congregation this morning. Let all of us be a part of this message today as we talk about the power of choices in our lives and the direction that those choices will lead us in our lives. And Father, as we do, I just pray that your Holy Spirit permeate this place from top to bottom, inside and out. I rebuke all distractions in the name of Jesus. I rebuke anything that tries to come into this place. I, I rebuke anything that tries to come against your anointed and against your word. And Lord, I ask that you just move in a powerful and wonderful way. In Jesus' holy and wonderful name, amen and amen. You may be seated. As I begin to preach this message this morning, there may or may not be some distractions in the house of the Lord. Amen. Paul, I pray that right now you rebuke those distractions. Amen. If you see a young person that may not be paying particularly attention to the message this morning, it takes a village to raise a family. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so don't be afraid to just say, hey, listen. Amen. Now, hey, uh, I had not done this in a while, and I really hadn't seen a need to do it in a while, but there was a time within our church uh, when we had some young folks that, that they would sit towards the back. I'm praising God that at least y'all are about halfway up. But they would kind of sit in the back, and, and about, as soon as the message would start, they'd just start doing their own thing. None of y'all ever did that in church, did you? Your old folks? Amen. But I was known to and not, not ashamed to do it again. But I would stop and say, hey, y'all put that down. Listen. Amen. Amen. Listen to the word of God. Because the word of God speaks to all of us. Amen. All of us in one season in our life. And hey, I've got some good feedback here of late that says that some of our young people have actually heard the word of God and actually used it. On some of the parents and grandparents, amen? <laughs> but funny how they can select that, isn't it? And so as we go through the word of God this morning, I want us to un understand, enjoy the word, but also understand that isn't it true this morning, church, that choices in our lives do a couple of things. They're either going to take us closer to the destiny that God has for us, on, or they're going to take us further away from where God has for us. Amen? Amen? There's only one of two ways choices can take us in our lives. So when we look at this story, it is, it is first of all, it jumps out at me that it was the younger brother who came and said, I want what's mine, and I want it now. Now, let's get a hold of this this morning, because if you're not in that season right now, you have been, and it is, isn't it amazing that when you're younger, that's when you know everything? Amen. Amen? That, that's when everything is 
is just crystal clear and it is just blows you away that everybody can't see life the way you see it. But here's the trouble. It's because we only see what's right in front of us. And we do not see the consequences that one choice can bring to our lives. Can I get a witness from an old folk in here this morning that can say one or two choices either way could have made all the difference in my life. Amen. Amen. Has anybody, can anybody give a witness to this, that you made a choice in your life that took you further away from God and it has taken you a while just to catch up? Amen. Amen. Come on, brother. So we're here this morning not only to rebuke Satan for trying to come against our young people, but we're here to try to educate some young folks this morning mm -hmm. that we have been through it and know what the Word of God says about it. Amen? Amen. Look here at what, what he says. First of all, he says, he said, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to give me what is coming to me right now. Now, here's what I know, church, and y'all get this. Before this young man ever got to his father, something had to happen in his life to bring him to that point. Would y'all agree with that? Mm -hmm. There had to be something going on in his life that brought him to the fact that says this life isn't good enough for me anymore. I want something different. Mm -hmm. And here's what I have come to know in my personal life, not only being a teenager once upon a time, but raising teenagers, holy, <laughs> raising teenagers, being a youth pastor, and watching young people most all my life, this is what I've come to know. It is a powerful thing to be under the influence of friends. Yeah. It's a powerful thing. Because here's one thing I learned early. I'm just going to give you a kind of a personal thing that God brought me to. And I thank God that he brought me to it at a young age. But I learned at a young age that any time you get a group of friends together, there's always one that's the leader. Y'all no, can give me a witness now if you want to. Always one that's going to lead the pack. And so here's what you got to figure out first of all. Are you a leader or are you a follower? Amen. Oh, I'm preaching the truth this morning, am I not? You're either a leader or a father, follower. If you are a leader, where are you leading people? If you are a follower, which most everyone is, because if you've got ten friends and there's only one follower, I mean only one leader, guess how many followers you got? If you are a follower and not a leader, here's what God showed me at a young age. The first thing I ask is, where are they leading me? Yeah. And where they're leading me, really where I want to go to accomplish the things that I want to accomplish in my life. Amen? Amen? Let me tell you something. It is a powerful thing to give your future over to someone else to lead you in a place that you know you don't want to go on your own. Amen. That's a powerful thing. And so God tells you this morning, bow up and stand up and say this, I'll be your friend, but I ain't doing that. Amen. 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 And here's one thing I learned also as I began to say, I had cousins, I had friends, and listen, I ain't saying I didn't try some things. But I'm going to be honest, I'm going to be real honest. But I'm saying when it got to the point where something in me said, you don't need to do that, mm -hmm. then I would tell them, I'll catch you next time. I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. And guess what I began to learn over time? They were still my friends, but they knew I had limits. Mm -hmm. They knew there were certain things that I just wouldn't do. And do you know, I, I can say this, and then I'm going to move on because I'm feeling a little personal, so I'm going to tell you that. Do you know what my driving force was? It may be different for everybody. You young folks over there, teenage guys, younger folks over here. It may be something in your life that makes it your thing. But listen, this is what my thing was. At the end of the day, whatever I did, the one thing that I never wanted to do was to disappoint my dad. Amen. 
And if I ever went home and did something that he didn't approve of, and he gave me that look, anybody ever got the look? Amen. My daddy never whipped me a day in my life, not once. But I'd cry myself to sleep over that look. And isn't it the same thing spiritually when we should say, we don't want to disappoint the Father. Amen. We don't want to disappoint. At the end of the day, we don't want to say, oh, I wish I hadn't have done that. But I followed the leader. And the leader took me places I didn't want to go. Y'all listening over there? Listen good. Because God's trying to tell us all something this morning. Amen. I don't care what your age is. We all make choices that either take us closer to the Lord or further away from the Lord. But at the end of the day, you better be ready to live with the choice you make. Amen. He said, I want you to give me everything that I've got coming to me. The first time I ever preached this message, you know what the title was? From give me to make me. Because down in verse number 19, he says, make me anything you want to make me. Just take me back. And I talked about the journey from give me to make me. Have anybody made it besides your pastor? When you said, Lord, give me this or I want this, only to go back to him and say, take me back. Amen. He said, give me anything. Give me what's coming to me in that power of that influence. But now look at verse number 13. Not many days the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. I want to tell you something this morning, old or young, sometimes we take a journey that's not from the Lord. Amen. The Bible says here he, he took his journey, and it was to a far country. How many of you believe this? There are certain countries we don't belong in. Amen. There are certain seasons in our life. There are certain things that we've gone through in our life that we had no business there. Amen. But what we did is long before we went to the Father and said, I'm leaving you for something better, something happened in our lives that influenced us to take a journey on our own to a country which we didn't belong and stay there way, way, way too long. Amen. Amen. What have we always said about sin? It'll take you further than you want to go. Keep you longer than you want to stay. And cost you far more than you're willing to pay. Amen. Amen. So when we look at that this morning, he took a journey. He took, to, he said, I want you to give me what I want, and I want to take my journey, and I want to do my, isn't that the bottom line, church, is that we get to a point in our lives where we're ready for freedom and ready to do our own thing. Amen? And oh, how that own thing has cost us so much. See, when we preach this sometimes, we talk about the love of the Father and how the Father took the Son back, and we should, and how redemption and restoration and forgiveness is key when it comes to our relationship with God the Father. That is true. But what we miss out so many times is what the trip cost him. Amen. And that's what we need to focus on this morning. You know why? Because, listen, he says here, he divided unto him his living, and not many days he took his journey into a far country, and there he wasted his substance with foolish living. See, he met some friends there, didn't he? <laughs> he met some folks that said, this guy's got some money. This guy's got some stuff. He's got some things that we can enjoy. They wanted his friendship because of what he had, not who he was. Amen. Y'all hear that this morning. Yes. Sometimes people want to be your friends well, for one or two reasons sometimes. Not because of the true friendship. I'm not talking about that part. People want to be your friends sometimes because of what you have Amen. or what they can get you to do. But true friendships will come to visit you when you're down. Amen. When you don't have a dime, they'll give you one. Mm -hmm. True friends, listen, I've said this for years and I'll say it right now. They won't always tell you what you want to hear. Right. But they'll tell you what you need to hear. Amen. How many of you have ever gotten mad at true friends because they told you what you need to hear but you didn't want to hear it? That's right. That's right. Well, I ain't talking to you no more, but it doesn't mean it ain't the truth. 
Only to call you up later. I'm sorry, you were right. I just didn't want to hear it at the time. True friends will stay with you. Amen. And I'm here to tell you this morning. I don't believe that true friends would ever want to lead you into a place that's going to harm you. Amen. They'll always want what's best for you. Are you a leader or are you a follower? Either way, which way are you going? And listen, what do you want a year from now in your life? Answer that question and then ask this question. Is what I'm doing today going to get me there? Come on, brother. If it's not, quit it. Because let me tell you something. Bad choices will ruin your life. Amen. Amen. Just make good choices. Wednesday night we even talk about Michael Brown was here and Ben grew up in our youth group. And, and, and one thing we always talked about was choices. Choices. For every life, there is a choice. And for every choice, there is a consequence. So choose well. Amen. Amen. Yes. So when we look at that journey, it was his journey to take. He had no business in that place, but it didn't take him long to go through everything the Father had given him. Now let me make this point this morning, and let me make it real clear. If you've ever spent time with the Lord, the Lord has invested something in you. Amen. Amen? And every day you go to the Lord, doesn't the Lord fill you up with daily blessings? He fills you up with the nourishment of the Word of God. You pray and you feel close to the Lord. Now, how many of you, you don't have to raise your hand, but I can almost guarantee in the house of the Lord today, there have been some who've been close to the Lord, but also spent a season running from the Lord. Walked away from the Lord. You didn't, not that you didn't love him. It's not that you weren't still saved. But you spent a season where you weren't seeking God. Yeah. Now let me ask you this. Day by day, moment by moment, little by little, did you feel it slipping away? Did you feel the hunger going away? Did you feel like you were just running out of steam and drying up? That's what this word means. When he left the father who would give him all he ever needed and went and tried to do it on his own and find a circle of friends that would eat it up, there was no way to replenish it. Guess what happened? It wasn't long till he ran out. And when he ran out, Here's what the Bible said. He began to be in want. I know in my life, when I went through a short season where I wasn't seeking the Lord the way I should and kind of doing some other things, and all of a sudden I, I found myself wanting more of what the Father had. Amen? And so when he got to that place, he started seeking something. Y'all give me a witness on this. He started seeking this in verse 16. In 15 and 16, he started seeking other things to try to fill up that space. Anybody ever been there? Amen. Where you seek something else but the Lord. You walked away from the Lord. You haven't felt his fellowship as close as you used to. And all of a sudden you want something to fill that space. But I'm here to tell you this morning, according to the word of God and according to the life that Eddie B. Woodard has lived, there is nothing that can take the place of the Lord in your heart. Amen. So he went to find a job from somebody and he went to find a little money here and a little money there and anything he could do to keep from having to go back to the Father and say, I failed and I made a mistake. You know what the hardest thing for people to do? Sometimes is to admit we're wrong. Amen. Amen. We made a mistake. We want to try to pin it on somebody else. They made a mistake and we do the same thing. We want to justify it. Amen? But he said, I want to do anything I can to keep from having to go back home and say, I made the wrong move. Until he got to the pig pen. And when he got to the pig pen, that's as low as a Jew can go, <laughs> is to be in the pig pen. But verse number 17 said, when he came to himself. Can anybody give a witness in the house this morning? 
that when you follow the leadership of somebody who was not leading you to the Lord, only leading you further away, and when you got to the place where you said, Lord, I, I'm going to put you on the back burner and I want to do my own thing, and it cost you way more than you were ever willing to pay. You know what? Sometimes you have to lose a whole lot before you come to yourself. Amen. That's right. Has anybody ever made this statement? What am I doing? I used to be so close to God. I used to be a part of the church. I used to be active. I used to be this. I used. What am I doing here? Well, you made a choice, right? And what you couldn't see was the consequences of one choice. Amen. And that choice led you here. So he says this. In my father's house, uh, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare? And here I sit perishing and hungry. Let me tell you this, church. I'm going to close up with this. But listen. I want you young people to particularly listen to this because time gets away a lot faster than you think. Yeah. This story centers around the fact between the relationship between him and his father. But guess what he also left? He left time with his brother. He left time with all the people that loved him, all the people that helped raise him, all the people that saw him growing up. Listen, all the people that saw the potential of what he could be. He left all of them for something he thought was better. So can you imagine when he came to himself, all the things that were going around in his head? I left this, I, left, I had it made and didn't even know it. That's right. You don't know what you got till it's gone. Amen. I'm here to tell you, things may not be like you want it, but they're never as bad as it seems. Amen. So when you leave home, you leave a lot, he said. And look, he said, when I came to myself, I was hungry. Look at verse 18. I will arise and go to my father's house. Y'all see what happened, church? He not only said, I made a mistake and I got to go home. He actually got up and went. Amen. So I'm here to tell you something this morning. Don't let pride stop you from saying I was wrong. Amen. But if I want to give one thing out of this message today, it would be this. Is where you want to go, where your relationships with other people is taking you. If not, as the Bible talks and has poems and everything that has been written down through the years, even if I have to travel all by myself, I'll go where I believe God wants me to go. Amen. Not where other people think I ought to go. Right. I'm not about to put my life into the hands of somebody who is taking me further away from the Lord. Amen. Amen. So as we get ready to close out this message this morning, we're going to do it. As we as we stand, this is what I want to ask this morning. I know we got social distancing, so I'm only going to ask for this. But I want every young person in this place to come to the altar. And I want their parents or their grandparents to come with them. Now listen, listen. If your child is not here, you come stand in the gap. Amen. And we're going to have prayer over our children this morning in the holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. And those who that pertains to, would you come forward right now?